You know, I, I usually open the scripture in a few places, but I think for this evening I decide to read just for one scripture, and that's John chapter 15. John chapter 15, that's on the page 1290. To be quite a reading here, 17 verses, I will try to read and I will try to get into the text because it is something very, very nice and important here. So, John chapter 15, starting with verse 1. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Uh, as to every branch in me not bearing fruit, he takes it away. And as to every one bearing fruit, he purge, purge it, that it might bring forth more fruit. You are already clean by reason of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abide in the vine, thus neither can ye unless ye abide in me. <clears throat> I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abides in me and, uh, and I in him, he bear much fruit for which for without me, sorry, for without me, he cannot do nothing. Unless anyone abide in me, he is cast out as the branch and is dried up. And they gather them as cast them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will and it shall come to pass to you. In this is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, and ye shall become disciples of mine. As the Father has loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. If ye shall keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love. As I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. I have spoken these things to you that my joy might be in you, may be in you, and your joy be full. This is my commandment that ye love one another as I have loved you. No one has got has greater love than this that one should lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if ye practice whatever I commanded to you. <clears throat> I cannot longer, I cannot longer bondman, I, I call you no longer bondman, for the bondman does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for I, all things which I have heard of my father, I have made known to you. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and uh, have set you that ye should go, and that ye should bear fruit, and that fruit should abide, that whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he might give you. These things I command, I command, I command you, that ye love one another. Amen. So it took a little long for me. Obviously, as always, I don't have enough time to preach everything from here. But every single time when I read the Bible, it is like you are Divy Scooper, so you call, and you are going deep and deep, and as you are, you are going deeper, it is like a big, huge ocean, the Bible. And you will find so much treasure over there. You know, people are still taking lots of treasure from the bottom of the ocean. And they are diving in and taking from there. I suggest you to read the Bible in such a way. Mm -hmm. Or Mike, maybe like a, like a mountain climber. The one who climbed on the mountain. That's another, another uh, 
uh, uh, effect, if I can say. As higher you go, as far away you can see. As higher you go, as far away you can see. I was in Romania this, this summer, and uh, it was a very nice sunset, but uh, it was one picture I took from the ground, and it was another picture I went somewhere up on the ladder. And then, guess what? I went somewhere, when it is a, uh, like, a, like a shelter over there, it is a flat roof, and I climb much higher. My children said, Daddy, mind to don't fall there. I said, the sun is so nice, the sunset is so nice, I can't miss this one. The higher you go, the brighter you see, the clearer you see. And you know, another thing, the higher you go, the farther away from the pollution you are going. You know, on the mountain, the air is much clearer. Go on the mountain. Lord Jesus Christ, many times, he went by himself on the mountain. And you know what he has done there. He prayed to the Father. I feel when I go on the mountain that I'm going closer to the Father, closer to God. Just be like a mountain climber when you read the scripture and you see the beautiful things that God told us. Coming back to our scripture, Lord Jesus Christ spoke many times in parables and many, many times as the Jewish people speak in the parables and they are learning why they are speaking from one to another. They are learning. Lord Jesus Christ said, I am. It is one of the seven I am. I am the good shepherd. I am the life. I am the resurrection. You know, we maybe one day we need to Preach about the seven I am. Lord Jesus Christ said here, I am the true vine. As soon we read this, we can, we can realize that not all the vines are true. Some of them, they are wild. And people are rooted in them. And we need to break out with the fake and nasty and wild Vine. It says in Isaiah about Israel that did I grow? Did I grow a wild vine that I gave? I, I'm taking a wild grapes. So Lord Jesus Christ said by Himself, "I am the true vine." And He says here, "My Father, it is husbandman." In another translation, He says, "It's the gardener." He is looking after the, the vineyard. He is looking after the vineyard. And it, it is so much. It is so much in this. But that we will go further on. As to every branch in me not bearing fruit, he takes away, and as, he, uh, and as to every uh, one bearing fruit, he purge. It is another uh, prune, yes? It is another word also. He is pruning. And I was thinking, well, that's kind of harsh. <laughs> it's not so easy to be pruned, yeah? But what about the branches that are cutting away, cutting off from the branch? Many people, they might say, well, they were branches. Yeah. But we need to remember that they are four soils, yes? Where the seed was thrown. One was the, on the pathway, one was between the stones, or on the stones, and the other between the, the thorns. These are the branches that doesn't bear fruit. These are the branches that doesn't bear fruit. So we need to watch, as we have even heard this afternoon, we need to watch to don't be such of soil that doesn't bear fruit. But what about those who bear fruit? Why are you pruning God? Because God, it is the, the, the one who pruned them. God is the one who, who purged them. It is. Uh, in, in Romania, I have a, I have a vineyard and I used to look after this. I wasn't a good gardener, so as God, it is no, no way. But my father, he came, he was a better gardener than I was. And he came and he told me how to look after the, the vineyard. And he told me, how long shall I prune? How long shall I cut the branch? 
and how to look into the branch if it is a good one or if it is not a good one. The one who bear fruit or who do, the one that take all the, the juice from the, from the vine and make this to wither. And that, that, that is a great skill over there. I can tell you, I learned so much from, the, from my father and the first year when I pruned myself the, the garden, I, I was kind of happy because I saw so many, so many uh, fruits, you know. But when my father came, he said, just this? <laughs> just this? And he told me again and again. Three years in a row, he came and helped me. So it is kind of, of, of skill to have, to know how long, how much, and when. Because it is a time in the year when the gardener goes and cut and prune the, the branches. And, and why does he cut the branches? Uh, uh, I, I, was, I had only one verse from another uh, scripture. Uh, here in, in a Song of Songs, you don't need to open. It just says, take, uh, take, us the, take, uh, take us the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vineyards. For our vineyards are in, in bloom. So when the, 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 the vineyard it is in uh, blooming, you know, the foxes try to come in and it shake the flower off. And because it shake the flower off from the, from the branches, the branch doesn't bring any more fruit. So we need to be careful of the foxes. What are the foxes in our life? What are the things that, you know, fox are very tricky. Even God, Lord Jesus Christ told about, uh, about the, the, the uh, king from, from Israel that he is a fox because he had double mind. People who has double mind, people who try to trick things that in my life try to trick me. Ah, it's not that bad. It's, it, it's not that bad. Okay, if it is a little bad, get rid of that. These are the things that God it is pruning from us. Sometimes it might be some joint pain, some headache, some problems that comes along. You know, Paul had a thorn in his flesh. flesh. Paul had a, had a thorn in his flesh. Why? To so don't get proud. These are the things that God allowed in my life. When, when I will have a problem in my life, I will think twice where it comes from and why it came from, for. Yeah? And when I'm thinking where it came from, it might came from my mistake. It might came from my mistake. God didn't put me to hit with the, with, with the hammer of my, my, my finger, yeah? No. He said, watch and be careful. Wear gloves. <laughs> Don't hit your finger. That doesn't come from God. But there are things from God allowed, that God allowed in my life just to prune me, just to make me to bear more fruit. And, uh, well, we go a little bit deep now. These are just the, I might call them technical things, because I might understand when I, when I have a problem, uh, let, let me tell you one thing. One day, I, I think I told you uh, another time, I was driving from, from my city to Bucharest, and because in Romania, the, those times, they, they did the way they, they uh, uh, renewed the, the, the road. It wasn't so nice, and they left a big uh, part over there. And when I drove, I, uh, two wheels, they were destroyed. And I was with someone in the car and said, oh, brother Daniel, I said, no way, no problem. I said, maybe, maybe God has something in mind and he tried uh, try to help me. And I went like about five kilometers, you know, with two wheels, very, very hard. You drive very hard back. I went back, I fixed the car and we went back to Bucharest because we had to go to Bucharest with that family. And on the way, it was a big crash. Three people died in that accident. And they were just cleaning up when I drove by. And they said, look, Brother Daniel, if we will still drove, drive that time without any problem, we'll, maybe we'll end in this accident. I said, praise the Lord, because we could see that. So you don't know. Maybe your problem 
It is to escape you from another bigger problem. And God will allow something in your life just as a pruning of the branch. I don't want to stay too much in this. But just remind, remember, whenever you have a problem with the school, with the, uh, anything, God, is this your pruning? Thank you very much because you want to, you want me to bear more fruit. More fruit. Why does God want to, to prune us? It is, well, let, let's go first. Abide in me and I in you. But if I go in verse 3, it says, Ye are already clean. This means you are already clean. You don't need to do anything to become more clean or more cleaner than that. You are clean. And why are we clean? Because of the words of Lord Jesus Christ. Because of sacrifice on the Calvary cross. We don't need to work of our salvation. If someone wants to do something to become safe, forget about this. You, 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 you won't become safe because of your works. You are saved because of his sacrifice on that Calvary cross. Because the blood shed on the Calvary cross. You are already saved. So, it says here, you are already clean. You just need to say, thank you Lord Jesus Christ because I am clean. Yes, sometimes as God told to, to uh, Lord Jesus Christ told to Peter when he wanted to wash his uh, feet. I said, no, no, master, how can you wash my feet? Uh, he, Lord Jesus Christ said, if I'm not washing your feet, you, you won't have part with me in heaven. And Peter said, because he was eager to be in heaven, Lord Jesus Christ said, oh, not only my feet, but also my body and my head. And Lord Jesus said, no, 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 who had a back, you, you don't need to take another one. Just the feet. Why? Because sometimes we take some dust on our feet. Sometimes we look somewhere. Sometimes we think somehow. Sometimes we speak some the way that Christians shouldn't speak. You know what I'm getting. Sometimes we are getting some some bad, uh, I don't know, uh, with a co- company, yes? With maybe, may, maybe bad companies. Get rid, go away, run away. Be like, like Joseph as he ran away from the Potiphar's wife. Run away. Don't stay there. You are already clean. Don't think that if Lord Jesus Christ comes tonight, is he, is he going to take me in heaven? Yes, of course. Why? I haven't done that much. No problem. You believed on, look over there, uh, for everyone who calls on his name, he will be saved. That's the simple gospel. Just call on him and you'll be saved. And you're clean. Let's go. Verse 4. <clears throat> abide in me. And I in you. What does it mean abide in me? What does it mean abide in me? It means that to get in and then get out. And come back whenever I need. Oh, Lord Jesus, you know, uh, I got in this trouble. Can you help me? Can you uh, do this and that? I have this exam. I have that and that. My business doesn't work well. My such or such. And then I can forget. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Now I don't need you anymore. Is that abiding in him? No. Abide this means to go and stay and suffer with him. Go and abide. Abide in me and I in you. It is a promise of Lord Jesus Christ. If you want to have Lord Jesus in your life, you need to be in him. Cannot work otherwise. Cannot work otherwise. And it is his promise. And Lord Jesus Christ is the son of God. It is a true God. Once he said, he doesn't take his word back. Yeah. Abide in me. And 100%, I will abide in you. I will stay with you. And I will be with you. Till the end of, of this, this time. And then we will be forever with him. I will never forsake you. Lord Jesus Christ said. Yes? So just stay with him. Sometimes, many Christians, it is sad. I, I, I don't want to say this. But I have to say, 
some Christian are just Sunday Christians. And that's not good. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, they forget about Lord Jesus Christ. It's not good to be. I know you are not so. And I don't know so much about everyone. But it is just what the Holy Spirit told me. Don't be a Sunday Christian. Be seven days Christian. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Sunday. Because Lord Jesus Christ wants to be with you and in you every single day, 24-7. May God help us. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit, why shall I abide in him? There are many, 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 I can tell you, many benefits, many blessings. There are many, thousands, billions blessings to abide in him. Oh, I, I, I don't have enough time to go through just a few of them. First of all, the devil cannot, cannot take, no one can pluck them from my hand. You remember that scripture, yeah? No one can pluck. If someone, it is in my hand. No one can pluck. We are here. Can you come a little bit? Come to me, please. Yes. Put your hands. Or, no, put, put your hands on, on, on top of my hands. Like this. And God's hands, it is on top of Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you very much. You can go back. Can you imagine? Double protection. No one can pluck you from there. No one can plug you from Lord Jesus Christ's hand. Why? Because Lord Jesus Christ keep you safe there. And the hands, as you saw, of the Father, it is over there on top of Lord Jesus Christ's hand. That's one of the benefits. Another one, it says, because you cannot bear fruit. Once you cut and plug off a branch from the vine, the, the, the branch start to wither. Start to get dry. And doesn't bear fruit anymore. Why shall I bear fruit? Well, let's go quickly. The time is funny. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless abide in the vine, thus neither can he unless he abide in me. So it is a warning here. We need Sorry, we need to abide in Lord Jesus Christ in order to bear fruit. I am the vine, ye are the branch. It is the second time when Lord Jesus Christ mentioned. It is just to make our mind aware. He that abides in me and I in him, he bear much fruit. He bear much fruit. And why he abide, uh, why he bear much fruit? Because the Father Prune that branch. Oh, don't forget the pain. Don't forget the, the things that, uncomfortable things in our life. Um, <clears throat> we, we, we went, we went uh, Saturday, we went for the book table. And uh, the brother who should come with the, with the uh, table and with the, with the books, he, he had some problems. He uh, forgot, he didn't find the, the keys. So he came with one hour late. And when he came, we first we, we stay around and we pray for the, 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 the evangelization that it is going to, to take place. And he excused himself quite twice, you know, quite much uh, about, you know, because uh, I, I, I didn't find the key, but praise the Lord. I said, Tim, don't excuse yourself anymore. It is not because of you. And he said, yes, it is because of the devil. He knows that what we are doing now, we are doing the right thing. We are doing the will of Father. And he goes against that. And he tried to stop you. And he said, oh, Daniel, that gives me so much encouragement. Yes, we are doing a good thing. And whenever you go to preach, whenever you go to, 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 to speak about Lord Jesus Christ, you will find some barriers on the ways. The devil doesn't like you to... To proclaim the gospel. The devil doesn't want. Make, make you to dry your heart, mouth. Like I'm doing now. Because he don't like that. Don't stop. Go on. Carry on. You are doing the right thing. If, if the Holy Spirit tells you. Speak with this man. Tell him or her. That God loves him or her. Just. 
speak out. But I, 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 I don't know. I will be with your mouth. Lord Jesus said. We had a day to the children. God touched the mouth of Jeremiah. He touched the lips of Jeremiah. You are clean now. You can speak now. I'm just a child. No, no, no. Don't say you are a child. Before you've been born, before you've been in, in your mother's womb, I choose you to be the nation prophet. Before you've been in your mother's womb, God had a plan, eternal plan for you. Keep that in mind. You are to bear fruit. But where shall we bear fruit? Okay, let's go because the time is running. <coughs> he that abides in me and I in him, so it is that condition, he bears much fruit. For without me, listen, without me you cannot do nothing. Without, we, we are nothing without Lord Jesus Christ. I am nothing. I wouldn't speak in English. I wouldn't be able to preach. I wouldn't be able to stay in, in, before you. Without Lord Jesus Christ. We are nothing. I am nothing. But with him we are everything. Without him. It says here. For without me. You, you can do nothing. And it is not me that I say. It is Lord Jesus Christ. And he knows what he speaks. So, trust on Him, believe on Him, and go with Him, and let Him to be in your life, and you, you will be in Him, yes. Let's go a little bit further. <clears throat> Unless anyone abides in me, he is cast out. Whoa, another casting out. If we don't abide in Him, it is a great warning here. This means that that person who don't abide in Lord Jesus Christ, it is one of that Soil, which I said, the first, the second, or the third. And we want to be the fourth. We might preach about that one day. We want to be the fourth that bring fruit. 30, 60, 100%. It doesn't matter if it is 30. Everyone, how much power, how much grace God gave to you each and every one. But you need to bear a little bit more. Yes? <clears throat> Unless anyone abide in me... He, he is cast out as the branch, and it is dried up, and they they are gathered, uh, and they gather them and cast them into the fire. I was in I was in Romania as I told you this this uh, summer, and, and uh, some people are looking after the the vineyards over there, but they haven't had enough time to burn the the dry uh, branches, and uh, it, it was quite of mess over there. And uh, I spoke with my neighbor, and we made a big fire in one night. And maybe for three hours, we burned and burned and burned dry branches from the vineyard. The same thing. I was looking and I was putting branches and branches in that fire. And I was thinking, John 15. John 15. The one who didn't bear fruit. Those who bear fruit, I went in the garden and I took some grapes. And my children went in the garden and they took some grapes. And mm, they are yummy. Everyone enjoyed the grapes. So the dry ones are in the fire. If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask. We, we don't go through all this. Let's go to verse 8. In this my father, my father, in this is my father glorified that ye bear much fruit. Oh, oh, this is the secret. If we want to please the Father, which we want to please the Father, Lord Jesus Christ said, I'm not doing what I, uh, everything what I want, I, I'm, I'm doing what my Father wants. I came here not to fulfill my will, but to feel, fulfill the Father's will. You remember in the, in the Gethsemane Garden, when he was praying and praying, and said, Father, please take away this cup. Take this cup away from me. And not my will. No, not my will, but your will be done. Fully submission. We need to learn from Lord Jesus Christ. He came here to do the Father's will. What will are you going to do? Are you going to please the Father? If you want to please the Father, if you want to please the Father, you need to bear fruits. 
If you want to please God, you need to bear fruit. Because he says here, verse 8, in this my father's, in, in this is my father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, and ye shall become disciples of me. My dears, I'm looking to that time. It is so annoying sometimes because I don't have enough time to speak. I would like everyone, don't look how much fruit you bear so now. It is not only saving souls, the fruits that God speaks here, Lord Jesus Christ speaks here. Yes, it is also saving people for eternity. But he says here, ye are my friends. I'm going and, and jumping over some, some of my, my, um, uh, some of the verses. Verse 12, he says, this is my commandment that ye love one another as I loved you. If we go here, we stay another 30 minutes, maybe more. This is my commandment that ye, this means you shall love one another. How? How shall I love you? How shall you love me? As Lord Jesus Christ loved us. How did Lord Jesus Christ love us? You know? He went on that cross. And he died for you. And he took all the penalty. His friend of you and his friend of me. He died for you and he died for me. And he says here, yes, there is no... <clears throat> No one, in verse 13, no one has greater love than, than this, that one should lay down his life for his friends. What can we say more than that? Look at Lord Jesus Christ being crucified, praying to the Father, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they are doing. Father, forgive them. Dripping blood on this earth. From his body. The Holy One. The Righteous One. Or unholy. And unrighteous like me. Like you. He died for you. He died for his enemies. He didn't die only for his friends. He haven't had so many friends. Maybe you have many, many more friends than Lord Jesus Christ had. He had lots of enemies. Even when they bang with the with the, with the hammer and the nail, crucifying him on that awful cross, he prayed to God to forgive the soldiers and to forgive you and me because we didn't know what we were doing that time. So much. You remember that I told you many times, my children asked me, Daddy, how much Lord Jesus Christ loved us? I said, so much, that he stretched behind to die for you and for me. Do you love your brother, your sister so much? That are you willing to die for them? That is his commandment. My dear brother, my dear sister, if someone will come here and will say, hey, someone should die for the community, for this meeting, am I willing to say, okay, take me first? Take me first. Can I put my microphone off and go to be sure or die for you to save the congregation? So much I need to love you. So much you need to love me. This is not what I'm saying for me. This is not what I'm thinking of myself. It is what Lord Jesus Christ said. He said, this is my commandment that he Love one another as I loved you. I will say amen. And I will let you go with these thoughts. But just one more thing. Ye are my friends. If ye practice, if you practice what I, whatever I commanded you. How wonderful. We want to have Lord Jesus Christ on our side, yes? We want to have Lord Jesus Christ as a friend. What a friend I have in Jesus. It's so nice when we sing this song. But am I doing what he told me? Am I fulfilling his commandment? Do I love my brother and my sister? If he walk on my, 
on my toe. Am I looking somehow? Well, no, no problem. If I receive a slap on my hand from someone, do I turn my cheek and say, no problem, hit me here. That's what Lord Jesus Christ told us. As I loved you, he loved us so much that he died. He didn't just receive one slap on his face. He was spat on his face. He loved you. Maybe more. Not maybe, sure, much more than your mother. Much more than your father. I can't love my family as much as he loved us. We need to turn to him and to live the life that Lord Jesus Christ showed and told us. I call you no longer bondman. It is so much. But I call you friends. For all things which I have heard of my father, I have made known to you. Another theme. Bear me with me another few minutes, please. Ye have not chosen me. Yes, but I have chosen you. <clears throat> Do you remember when I preached here and I said, you are Jews, you are a, a gift of the Father given to Lord Jesus Christ? You remember that preaching? If not, I will preach again. For me, it's not hard to preach again another, the same preaching as Paul said, but for you it is, you, you, you will profit of it. For you it is a profit. It is not that you are a gift of the Father to Lord Jesus Christ, as he says in John chapter 6, but you are chosen by God. You are his chosen people. He chose you. He said, ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. What can I think more than that? My brain cannot comprehend, cannot grasp and take in. I am chosen by Lord Jesus Christ. He chose me. He want me to be his. He didn't reject me. Many people, they will reject you. Many people, they will laugh you. Many people, they will mock you. Many people, they will turn their back to you. You will never ever do that to me. Because he chose you. You might say, well, Brother Daniel, how can I know that? Because you are here. Your presence tonight in this place proves that you are chosen by God. It doesn't matter how many times you came here. You are chosen by Lord Jesus Christ. Go with this in your heart. Bear this in, 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 your, in your heart and in your mind. And what, whenever the devil will, will try to to, to come with any doubt in your mind. Ah, are you? Yes, no problem. John chapter 15 tells me that. I'm chosen by God. Go away. Behind me, Satan. You have nothing here. He chose me. I didn't choose him. He loved me first. That's why we love him. May God help us. And the last. <clears throat> I have chosen you. And I have said to you. I can't bear many fruits. My dear brother and my dear sister, it doesn't matter if you are a child or old. You are chosen by Lord Jesus Christ and you are set by Lord Jesus Christ that you shall go, as Adrian went, that he should bear fruit. And that fruit should abide. Hallelujah. May God help us to understand the purpose of living here. Somebody told me, obviously, I think he hates me, <laughs> but he, he said, Daniel, why God doesn't take you home? I said, because he need, you need me to tell you about him. That's why. <laughs> you need to hear about him. If you would take all the Christians, as he they, they just gave their life to Lord Jesus Christ, who will hear about the gospel? Who will preach the gospel? That's why we are here. You are here with a special 
purpose to go out and bear fruit and not any kind of fruit, the fruit that will abide. Am I shouting too much? Too much? Forgive me. I will shout much more just to calm this in my mind, in my heart. God, I want to bear fruit that that fruit will abide. This means will remain, will stay in the house. Help us, Lord Jesus Christ. Should abide. That whatever. And then it comes. You know, many, many Christians, they, they use these words. Oh, ask everything and it will be given because you are the, the, the child. Are, am I fulfilling all this? Am I fulfilling all this? Do I abide in Him? Do I bear fruits? Do I bear much fruit? Does the fruit abide? Then, it says here, then it says here, and that fruit should abide, that whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, He might give you. Amen to that. Let's all, uh, all together say, Amen. 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 Once you fulfill all these things, you can ask anything of the Father. And He is going to give it to you. Because you are pleasing the Father. Because you, have, you are bearing fruit. And much fruit. And that fruit abide. May God help us. There will be more, many more things, but I will re- read just the last sentence here. Just the last phrase. Um, <clears throat> these things I command to you that ye love one another. May God help us to <coughs> love one another. How can I stay in, it was also in here in the text, how can I abide in Lord Jesus Christ? You know, it, I, I don't want to go back. Abiding in Lord Jesus Christ, it is loving one another as Lord Jesus Christ loved us. That's the simple way. If we love one another, the way Lord Jesus Christ loved us, we abide in Him. Because we fulfill his commandment. May God help us and may his name be glorified for his name's sake. Amen. 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 Amen.